So in my previous videos that I've made about tiny homes, there's two camps of people. There's people that absolutely love tiny homes. And then there's the people that are saying, why don't you just go ahead and buy a small manufactured home for less money? So today we're going to be going over the major differences between the two types of homes. So that way you can make the best decision for yourself if you're trying to decide which one's better, tiny home or manufactured home. Now, the first thing that's pretty obvious when you look at a manufactured home is the design of it. And when you look at a tiny house, it just literally looks like a tiny type of home. Home. just look, like it's just small it's just a house that's a little teeny tiny so that's like one of the biggest appeals to a specific type of tiny house but what are you going to get as far as square footage beyond the look of a tiny house the typical size of them is about 100 to 400 square feet the average cost per square foot is about 130 to 150 dollars per square foot now if you compare that to a single wide small manufactured home their square footage is about 560 to 784 square feet and the average cost is about 80 dollars to 100 dollars per square foot so when you look at a 400 square foot tiny home you'll see that there usually is like a loft that's kind of low hanging so you're probably going to hit your head and that's usually the sleep sleeping quarters and then it has a like a full kitchen and a living room area but it just happens to be very very small now when you get into a tiny manufactured home it's like one shot it's like a gunshot style home they do have the same exact type of materials in both of the types of homes the major difference between these two is the building standards they're built to. So a tiny home in many cases are as built to what they call PMRV or RV standards. PMRV stands for Park Model Recreation Vehicle. This type of tiny home is not built or intended for permanent dwelling. A PMRV is technically classified as a temporary dwelling that is built on a metal frame with wheels and is around 400 square feet or less. And if you look on the RV website, they specifically say that PMRVs are not meant for long-term living use. And before you come after me saying, my friend lives in a PMRV and they've lived in it for years, you can do that. I'm just saying. In some areas, if you're trying to fix it to a foundation, they're not gonna allow you to. Now, if you look at a tiny manufactured home, they are built for long-term living use and they're built to HUD standards. HUD stands for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The Office of the Manufactured Housing Program oversees the construction and statutes, standards and regulations of manufactured housing, providing customers with resources related to the purchase and installation and the maintenance of a manufactured home. In addition to these programs, there's a recourse for homeowners to resolve complaints through the state administration agency through the dispute of resolutions. The building materials between the two of them are almost identical. Now, of course, both of those homes are built in a factory and they're brought to the location. The difference between a lot of tiny homes is that they're going to be on wheels. Now, you can attach a tiny home to a foundation, but you have to have that tiny home built to the regulations that require for that area, or it won't be considered a actual home. It might be considered as a shed or a um, office or a workroom. And then the county will tell you that you can't use it as a living quarters. Now with a tiny manufactured home, you're going to put it in place. You're still going to have to have that approved by the county. And in many cases, you're going to have to make sure that it meets a certain square footage. Now, every single area and every single town and parish has a requirement of a certain building square footage. As little as uh, 600 feet, it can be as much as 1500 square feet. So you're just going to have to check to make sure that you're uh, allowed to have those specific types of homes. In most cases throughout the country, it's gonna be a lot easier to get a manufactured home to be able to be put on a piece of land than a tiny home. Most places don't understand what a tiny home is, and if it's built to PMRV standards, it's not gonna allow you to affix it to a foundation. We're already starting to see the attitude towards tiny homes changing as we see more communities come together for housing the homeless. This would be a perfect opportunity as well if they allow low-income families to purchase these tiny homes so they can begin to start building general generational wealth through owning real estate. So now let's get into the financing of a tiny home and a manufactured home. Um, I know that most people, when they buy a tiny home, they're literally buying it cash. But in some cases, some people can't actually come up with that type of money. So they're trying to look for financial ways of trying to finance these you're going to have to get something either called a chattel loan or a personal loan. So what is a chattel mortgage? You can actually have a chattel mortgage on a tiny home or even a manufactured home, as long as it's not tied to a piece of property. A chattel mortgage is a loan arrangement in which the item of a movable personal property acts as a security for a loan. 
The movable property or chattel guarantees the loan. The lender holds the interest in it. The chattel mortgage differs from conventional mortgage in which the loan is secured by the lien on the real stationary property. And you're definitely going to want to shop around to make sure you get the best rates. I've seen as high as like 20% for a chattel loan or a personal loan, but I've seen them as low as 7.5%. Now, let's go to a manufactured home where you can actually do a 30-year mortgage. As long as that tiny manufactured home is more than $65,000, you can get a government-backed 30-year mortgage on it. Now, in the future, if you decide to refinance your manufactured home, you can do that with your local uh, credit unions, and there's many local banks that will refinance as long as it meets certain credentials and it's not above a certain age. Now, with a tiny home, most likely that isn't gonna happen. Now, this is probably where you're gonna wanna pause the video if you're looking for specific ways that you can finance a manufactured home. Go ahead and screenshot it now because there's so many different ways. I'd have to make a whole separate video just on this information alone. Now, when it comes to trying to get your uh, tiny home insured or your manufactured home insured, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have a hard time finding people that will actually insure these types of homes, but you're going to have an easier time trying to find somebody that's going to uh, insure your tiny manufactured home because they're built to HUD standards. When you have a tiny home that's on wheels, especially if you're riding it down the road, you're gonna to have to get specialized insurance. And a lot of times it's RV insurance and you have to make sure that it covers the contents inside as well. I've done a previous video with a young couple that said that they ended up going with Lords of London. They also stated the fact that when they went with Lords of London, it actually cost them the same amount as when they bought their brand new house that was affixed to the foundation. Their insurance payments were the same on their 1500 square foot house house that they have affixed to a foundation as it was for their tiny home that was 400 square feet. Just know that when you're buying insurance for a tiny home, you're going to be paying a lot. Now, when it comes to a manufactured home, you're not going to be paying nearly as much as you would for a tiny home. And you can always shop the rates around. And there's going to be lots of local areas in your area that actually cover manufactured homes. Always make sure, just like with the tiny home, that the contents inside are covered. And of course, since it's fixed to a foundation, if you're in a flood area, make sure you get flood insurance, especially here in Louisiana, we flood all the time and there's no reason for you not to have flood insurance. In many cases, it's less than $500 a year and it's $500 of peace of mind in case a flood does come to your area. Now let's talk about the resale. So this is a pretty much a wash. If you look at the two types of products, they are usually a depreciating asset, except, except if you've, you've heard me tell you this before, if your manufactured at home is in a good location, you will increase your value, especially in the last year or two, manufactured homes have increased exponentially. And it wasn't just the land underneath it. It was the fact that they actually had a home on the piece of land that increased the value of the property itself. Now, with tiny homes, they generally depreciate. They're like, in most cases, they're going to go down the minute you roll them off the lot. But like I mentioned in a previous video, when I talked to a young couple who had had their tiny home for several years, they actually did make a profit on their tiny home. It just kind of tells you what kind of world we live in right now. People are very desperate to get into a house and they're willing to pay a little bit extra just so they can have a home right now. Now, if you look at any lot throughout the United States, all, all the tiny homes are, have increased exponentially. All the manufactured homes have increased exponentially and they have a delay of how long it's going to take for you actually to receive your home itself. So instead of waiting like the two months that you normally would, it's taking up to nine months before your home is actually delivered. So in some cases, if you wanted to get your house right now, you may want to consider buying a resale property that's small, or you can buy a tiny home from somebody that's already reselling them. Just make sure you do a full inspection of that home. Now, I know when you look at a manufactured home, a lot of people will call it a mobile home. But once that's attached to a foundation, it isn't exactly mobile and it costs tens of thousands to have them removed and put into another location. Now, when you have a tiny home, especially one with wheels, it's going to be a lot less expensive for you to move it from location to location and then move it to another site. The thing that is great about a tiny home is you can travel with that 
throughout the country. You can move it several times. And the best thing I've heard about being in a tiny home from a fellow subscriber and YouTuber, Artist Haven, she said that she loved being a part of the nomad lifestyle where she could go wherever she wanted to do in the United States and still be able to see everything and have her home with her. It does cost you to move them. And it is kind of a pain in the butt to try to find an RV park that will allow you to leave your tiny home there for an extended period of time. They usually have very short term leases. And some areas you can find them where they allow the tiny home to stay there for years but in the most cases they have a very short-term lease agreement that you can use their location now if you have it on a fixed location and you want to move it it's so small it's a lot less expensive than trying to move a manufactured home now a manufactured home can cost as little as three thousand dollars to move it down the road but it can cost you up to thirty thousand dollars depending how far you want to move your manufactured home so if you're looking for something that you can move in the future maybe tiny homes is the way for you to go now the rental opportunities for both of these types of homes is there if you look at a lot of places that are considered like tourist areas tiny homes have been popping up everywhere. Now you don't see as many manufactured homes. So what would be the rental opportunity there? Now, if you live in an area like I do where that has a lots of plant workers and people that come in that work uh, part-time work where they work in seasons, manufactured homes are fantastic. You can have them one right after another and the plant workers will rent them out from you for that period of time for six months and then they move out. In some cases, you'll have to have them furnished. In other cases, you do not. And I I'm a big fan of manufactured homes for my specific areas as far as rentals. But if I lived in a vacation spot like Myrtle Beach or even Utah where I was just at, I will tell you right now, I would have a hundred of these little tiny homes. And where I was at Zion National Park, that's exactly what they were doing. They had all sorts of little tiny homes that are up along the mountain. And the investment to go in to put those tiny homes in that location for the amount of rent you would get is a gold mine. Here's a perfect example of exactly what I'm talking about. Right in Zion National Park, the Guardian Angel Tiny House, in the summertime it rents for about $500 to $600 a night. And in the fall, it rents for about $600 to $700 a night. Gold mine. Cha-ching. Now, look, I know that you're going to be looking at the, these homes and trying to make a decision for yourself. You're just going to have to go ahead and make a pros and cons list if you're trying to decide. Figure out how much the insurance is going to cost you. Find out how much the piece of land is going to cost you if you're going to affix the tiny home to a piece of land. Find out how much utilities are going to cost you for that as well. I want you to also check to see how much the taxes are for a tiny home and compare that to the taxes for a manufactured home. And don't forget to get flood insurance. It's an extra policy, yes. Again, it's $500 a piece of mine. Don't try to save $500 in one year and then lose everything the next. To watch more videos about tiny homes and manufactured homes, you're gonna wanna click this playlist right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this, because good real estate information matters.